my anger has just been building up slowly through the, the second <laughs> half of, uh, of this whole thing. But let, you know, let's 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 see how I can how much you, more we can go. I Come can on. make you more angry. Yeah, I can make you more angry. I just start, mate. Just go for it. Just go for it. I'm already I'm already sad about this topic. Why? Because it's getting in the way of one of the things I'm working on. Actually, do you know what? I'm, I'm partially sad about it, but I'm partially excited because I have been putting off learning it properly because I thought, you know, this is what I do, by the way. If I can't be bothered learning something properly, I just go, wow, let's, why don't they fly here and say it to my face? Yeah. And, and then, then I'll know all the stuff. And so you're, you're here to talk about viewports. Viewports, yeah. It kind of gets complicated, so... It used but, to be complicated years ago, and it's got more complicated as far as I can that tell. That is, that is. We'll start at desktop browsers. I will be talking about this browser, but it also applies to this browser. That's Chrome, and that was Safari. Yeah. Just making sure. Yeah. Or this browser. That's Firefox. But of course, for obvious reasons, we'll be choosing this browser. OK, OK, yeah, yeah. yeah. My question is, what do you call the big white section there? How do you call it? Uh, well, you know. Don't overthink it, just. Well, I was, I was going to say viewport, but then I'm worried there's now a trick question. No, it's, it's yeah? The viewport. Oh, we okay. can call it the viewport. <sighs> All right, okay, I'm doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's specced at the CSS2 level, and it says user agents, which is speckling for browser, yeah. for continuous media, so not paged media, continuous. Um, they offer a viewport, which is a viewing era, area through which users can consult a document. That's, that's a beautiful yeah. piece of yeah. spec text. Perfect. Right. Love it. All right. If you want to visualize it, this is the CSS that you can use. So you insert an element, you do it position fixed, inset zero, which is top right, bottom left, yep. zero. And I'm not giving it a border here, by the way. I'm doing an outline because border can affect its size. Yes, and I was going to say, hang on, outline goes on the outside, but then I hadn't read your fourth line there, which is yeah. Yeah, magic. Excellent. Yeah. If you do this, it will end up here. Yeah. That's okay. what we define, right? The big wide area is, is the viewport. Right now, I'm comfortable with that. Cool. If this is your content, so if this is your body, the yellow part is your body with a paragraph in it, some text, uh -huh. this is the viewport. If your content is too long, again, this is the viewport. Yeah, OK. So position fixed is the viewport. And now the episode can end, and we can all go, no, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, one thing with this, of course, if your content is too long, what does the spec say? Well, if the content is too long, um, the user agent should offer a scrolling mechanism. So on iOS, we get this thing there on the top right. You, you can't really see it because it's an overlay scroll bar. Mm. So you have the scroll thumb there. It, it, it's on top of it. Um, but some other systems, or if you have changed it to your system preferences, you can have a classic scroll bar. Yes. Last time I checked on Macs, that switches automatically if you plug a mouse in. Yes. Yes, OK. Yeah. But did you see the change? Let me go back. Oh, oh. This is with an overlay scroll bar. I see. And then this is with a classic scroll. Which bar. again is what you would expect with position fixed. So, yeah. Yeah. OK. So, so living the, in the, the viewport land. gets resized because the classic scroll bar eats away some space. And you will see also the body, it also became a bit more narrow. Yes. Yeah. 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 This, this is all, this is fine. All right. OK. One thing, though, is we call it the viewport. And that name has changed over time. Because nowadays, we, we not only say the viewport, because more viewports have come in existence, we now call it the layout viewport. Exciting. Yeah. OK. It gets difficult, though, because sometimes if you read an older spec, which was published a long time ago, it will say the viewport. Then it means the layout viewport. Newer specs will say, oh, I'm targeting the layout viewport explicitly. So they will use the, the correct name. And it's called the layout viewport because that's the well, mm -hmm. it's called a layout viewport because if you position fixed, if you lay an item out using position fixed, it will remain there. So position fixed bottom is there at the bottom of our viewport. Ah. If we scroll, the element stays into place. Yeah, I was kind of sensing that you are not too happy with the layout viewport. Neither am I. 
Ah. Why do you call it the layout viewport and why don't we call it the position fixed yeah. viewport? It's because it's where things are laid out when the position fixed, yeah. right? Because we saw with your the, the body thing, it was going way outside the layout. Things were being laid out outside the layout viewport, right? Right. So that's yeah. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. Okay. I I agree. So this is my personal opinion. I would love to call this the position fixed viewport, but everybody by now uses the layout viewport, so we'll just we'll just go with that. Okay. Okay. That was the layout viewport, but we need to talk about more stuff, namely the ICB. Okay. I will explain what it stands for. No worries, mm -hmm. no worries. Um, but first, let, let's take a step back. Say I have a parent element with a width and a height of 10 EMs on both sides. Yeah. And then in there, I have a child with its width set to 100% and its height also 100%. Yeah. You've given it a red color just so that we can see it. So the, the child will now fill the, the parent. That was my question. How tall will the child be? It's going to be your old 10M, 10M box, right? Yeah. 100%, 100%. If you put it in the browser, it looks like this. This is a square, 10Ms, 10Ms. Yeah. If we pop open DevTools, we can query its size. So we can do, hey, get me the bounding client rectangle of this element. And it will say, well, the width is 160 pixels and the height is 160 pixels, Excellent. which makes sense because 1M is 16 pixels by default. Multiply them by 10, we get 160. So this is right. Brilliant. Yeah. Now what's happening here is that the child is being sized by its containing block. And the containing block was defined by its parent. So the yes. parent kind of limited like, hey, this is how tall you can be. So this is a new term that I'm introducing here. It's a mm -hmm. containing block. It is also specified and it says, well, Many box positions and sizes in CSS are calculated with respect to the edges of a rectangle called a containing block. And it is the parent that establishes the containing block for its descendants. OK. And then maybe you're about to get onto this, but things like position absolute might change what the containing block is, because that will change what 100% and 100%. All right, I'll shut up. That's why it says, in general. <laughs> ah, good, good. OK, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> So mm -hmm. if we take a look at our markup here, the child, its containing block is the parent. The parent's containing block is the body. The body's containing block is the HTML or the root element. Yeah. But what's the containing block of the root element? Oh, dear. Is it the layout viewports? Yes, you're onto things. Is it? Yeah. I guess it's going to be we, that or this ICB we'll, we'll, thing. I don't know what it is. We'll just try, right? We'll just, like, for our child, few sides back, we, we gave it a width and a height of 100%. Mm -hmm. We can do the same thing for the HTML element. So if we give our HTML element a width and a height of 100%, we can visualize it. We do the same thing, not a border, but an outline, and we can, we can show it on screen. Just like before? Yeah. yeah. So this is our uh, browser. We have some content in there. And to visualize our uh, root element, it pops up like this. OK. Yeah, I've done this before, especially when I was uh, if I was trying to have like a, a, a fixed header and an inner scrolling element, like the thing I start off doing is making the HTML element like 100% yeah. or something like that. And that's, that's what we've done here. Yeah. OK. We call this area the ICB or the initial containing block. So ICB is short for initial containing block. Which so far is exactly the same as the layout viewport. That's what the spec says as well. Oh, this is good. The containing block in which root element lives is a rectangle called the initial containing block. Uh huh. And for continuous media, it has the dimensions of the viewport. This is sounding good. I mean, it, we've got two terms that mean the same thing. For desktop browsers. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> we'll cover mobile in a while. <laughs> no OK, worries. OK. So it has the dimensions of the viewport. Um, so that means if this is our viewport for long form content, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Um, if we have the classic scroll bar there on the right, yeah. our viewport gets resized, so our ICB also gets resized. OK, so that's the same still. Yeah. OK, OK. Looks, yeah. I'm, I'm still OK with this, I think. Cool. Uh, but there's a grin on your face. Yeah, we're, which is we're, suggesting... we're building towards <laughs> OK, <something. I'm> gonna, <laughs> yeah, OK, OK. The definition also says the second part, it is anchored at the canvas origin. So the canvas is where the document is being drawn. This has nothing to do with the canvas element. No, it's, no, no. When CSS talks about canvas, it's just the kind of paintable area, yeah. right? Yeah. Where it paints okay. the document. Yeah. Um, and the ICB is anchored at that origin. So that origin being 0, 0, top left. 
Yes. Okay, so the, and as you scroll, that's going to move. Yes. Yes. On okay. this slide, I have them both laid out. If I scroll the page down, you will see oh. our ICB move up with that. I see. Interesting. Yeah, okay. I guess that makes, that does make sense. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah, we follow the definition. Ah, yes. So this explains the thing of where if you have the HTML element like 100%, 100%, and then you have stuff and you give it a background color, st stuff will overflow it. But as you scroll down, that background color will have stopped at yeah. the ICB. I see. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the reason, by the way, why you see the content here is because by default, we have this concept of overflow in our documents. So the body bleeds out of the HTML element, so it remains visible uh, there. Yeah. Right, okay. Huh, I learned a thing. Cool, teach me more. <laughs> if you want to measure the ICB, so right here, um, I have Chrome opening it with the DevTools, so mm -hmm. it gets resized yeah. because we have less. There's less area for that document yeah. to paint, right? Yeah. We can, yeah. And we can measure it uh, using JavaScript. Now, what would be your guess? Like, if I want to measure... Oh, um, OK. So if it was, if I was going to use inner width and inner height, that's the viewport layer, I suspect. So if I wanted to measure the ICB, well, I guess I, if the HTML element is 100%, 100%, I could use the, the bounding box of the root, yeah. but only if it's 100%, only if the HTML element has been made to be yeah, that size. Yeah. So that's why we have uh, other properties that we can ask. Maybe these. On the document ah. element, we can request the client height and the client width. And that will return the width and the height, of course. Right, I see. And you, you just mentioned window.inner height and window.inner width. Yes. By default, these are the very same. But in certain browsers, as you pinch zoom, the value for window inner height and inner width change, which is pretty weird. Because, yeah, that's not good. Yeah. I don't like that. No, that smells bad. Well, not all browsers do it, thankfully. Okay. So, but some do it, um, which huh. I also think is weird. So that's why we can't use window.inner width or window.inner height. Oh, I've we got need code to, to use, change. We need to use these. Okay, client width, cl client height on the document element. That's okay. That's yeah. the okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is, does that only work if you had 100% um, on the HTML element? Like no. you, that just that just gen this just generally. Works. This is the general. So th you use this instead of using the get bounding client track because. For get client uh, get bounding client track to work, you would need to size it one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Whereas this doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Learned another thing. Next up, viewport units. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I'm less familiar with some of the new ones that we have. We'll 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 cover the old ones first, Good. and then we'll talk about the yeah. new ones. I need to later on. be yeah, brought yeah, back yeah. into my comfort yeah, zone. Yeah. So this is our viewport, our layout viewport. What if I want to size an element? equally to, to that size. We've got VH and VW. Yes. So Excellent. we've got viewport percentage lengths, which are relative to the size of the ICB. That's what the spec says. They are relative to the size of the initial containing block, not the layout viewport. Okay. But yep. the size of the ICB is linked to the viewport, as we just established. So mm -hmm. They're the same the, thing right now. So everything's... There, there, there's a link there, right? Uh -huh. um, we've got these units. VW, which is 1% of the width of the viewport size, ah. VH for the height. We yeah. also have VI and VB. Which yeah, those are were the, new to me. Those but, are the logical ones. Yeah. And then we have VMin and VMAX, uh, VMin being the smaller of VW or VH, and yeah. then uh, VMAX being the larger one. Which I don't feel I've used a, so much, or maybe for font sizes. S sometimes it's handy if you're making like a demo where you want like a little square in the center, and yes. it should work on, on on like landscape and portrait and whatever. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah. So we can use uh, these units for that. So if you want to size a box to the size of the viewport, we use uh, for the width 100 VW and for the height 100 VH. Uh, and we give it a, a light blue background so that we can see it. Yeah. And it will appear right there. It will fill up the space. That's exactly what I expected. Yes. Cool. If we have uh, larger content, again, the box will appear on there. And it'll if we have away. classic scroll bars, oh, oh, no, it's going to be fine. It's, it's going to be fine. It's it's not going. To... Uh. Oh, it's it's bigger than yes. So, oh, we have the classic scroll bar there on the right. One hundred VW becomes too wide. 
Yeah. And then as a result, because it is painted too wide, we, we also get, get a scroll horizontal bar. scroll bar. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, but so hang on. But that's not then. That's this not... is according to spec because the spec says scroll bars are assumed not to exist. That's a bad assumption because do you know what? I've seen scroll bars before. They do exist. People either roll their eyes I'm... or they go, yeah, this is not how it works. I'm going to do both at once, mate. We yeah. are aware of that. This is one of the things that we are discussing within the CSS working group, within the viewport investigation effort, which is part of Interop 2022. We are so looking at this. Media queries, like when you're doing a, a media query width, that assumes scroll bars don't exist. But that, there's a good reason for that, because you can create an infinite loop otherwise. Yeah. But I can't immediately think of an infinite loop that you could create if, if v, uh, v, VW uh, assumed that scroll bars, scroll bars exist, which they do. OK, whatever. OK. Anyway, you're correct on this. This is uh, developer frustration. Yeah. You didn't expect this right uh, to work. So we will be looking, looking into it. Let's talk about pinch zoom. Which we have on desktop as well as, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, as mobile. Yeah. OK. So this is our um, ICB in red. Hmm. This is our layout viewport in blue. Let's scroll a bit down the page like this. Right. So our ICB is up there. Yeah. Our viewport, uh, layout viewport is there. It's the blue one. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Now, what we see there inside of the browser, so inside of the, the layout viewport as well, let me give it a orange dotted yeah. border. This is the visual viewport. Yes. This is the part that we currently see. If you pinch zoom in. Very good. Yes. This happens. Yes. I've seen this before. And you end up with this fun thing where if you will start scrolling up until you hit the layout viewport, and then you start dragging that around. So you're, yeah. it's kind of like this. What, what, Whatever, the, the visual viewport is kind of like knocks around. <laughs> the, the visual viewport is, a, is contained by the layout viewport. And if you now like scroll, that, scroll the page down again, the visual viewport will move a bit down until it hits the bottom edge of the layout viewport and then starts boom. dragging it with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, OK. So if I now uh, pan to the right, yeah, this happens here as well. Interesting. So you could be like moving around there, but you're not changing scroll left. You're not changing scroll top until you start hitting against that visual viewport and dragging that up. Yeah. And, and that's when your scroll events are going to happen. And not, yeah. Yeah. Because the visual viewport has its own scroll events and its own resize events. Of course it does. Yeah. Yes. So this is what we call the visual viewport. It is also spec that says the portion of the viewport that is currently visible is called the visual viewport. That's nothing too fancy. Like I can understand this. And this is, we have a, a we have JavaScript visibility into this as, as well, right? Yeah. If you want a different uh, visualization of what I just did, so I first I scrolled down a little bit. Yeah. Then I pinched zoomed in. So what I basically did is I made the visual viewport smaller. Yeah. And then we panned to the right. So this is a different uh, representation. This is what you just mentioned. Like if you start scrolling now again, you will move the visual viewport down. And, and it's good that it does this because if you had a few fixed position elements, uh, and, and so if you were changing the size of of the layout viewport, you would pinch zoom in on to try and read a word, but all of the fixed positions would, would get massive yeah, and yeah, obscure yeah, the thing yeah. you're trying to zoom in. So this this makes sense. Yeah. Uh, it's complicated, but it makes sense. As you mentioned, we have some JavaScript API for this to, to tap into it. We, we, can, we can measure the visual viewport. We can ask, like, hey, how tall are you and where are you positioned? Um, so if I open up DevTools, I can use window.visualViewport, and it will give me a bunch of values. Width and height is the width and height of the visual viewport. So it will always be equal to or less than the size of the layout viewport. Oh, I see. And then the other two, one is relative to the layout viewport, and the other one is relative yes. to the ICB right at the top. OK. Yeah, that so you makes get sense. the distances to both uh, uh, origins uh, of layout viewport and the ICB. Very and easy. then scale is a scale factor. The amount uh, of pinch zooming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What about these browsers, though? Oh, I've seen these before. Yes. So on the left there, we have uh, Safari, Safari on iOS. Yeah. In the center, we have Chrome on Android. And on the right, we have Firefox with the URL bar in the correct position. Yes, I think in so my too. Opinion. I think so too. We it, tried it, and I 
I liked it and people didn't like it and we removed it. Anyway, anyway, an another topic. Yeah, it takes some time to get used to, but I like it as it's well. It's nearer where your fingers are, so it's easier to type into. Anyway, yes. So we've just established these three concepts, uh, ICB layout viewport and uh, visual viewport. These browsers, of course, they have it as well. So they have a layout viewport. Yeah. They have an ICB. They do. And it's all looking good. The same size as the layout viewport. And they have a visual viewport. For the pinch zooming and all of that sort yeah. of stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. But. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. If your page content is too long, and if you scroll the page down, stuff happens, right? <sighs> yes, it does. So we're going to see URL bars disappearing, and that bottom, presumably that yeah. bottom bar in Safari well, goes. They won't be animated, because this is way too hard to do in Keynote. <laughs> but I will just show you the after version. So if we scroll the page a bit down, yeah. we get this. Great. OK. Yeah. Dynamic toolbars have contracted. They have gone away. How does this affect uh, the layout viewport, the ICB, and the visual viewport? <laughs> Come on, so, rip the Band-Aid off. Yeah. Come on. So this is the layout viewport. The layout viewport simply resizes. Yeah, yeah. Does it do it frame by frame, as as the thingy nope. does it? No. Great. No, okay. No, so no. that's going to snap some point as the scroll bar, yeah. go, uh, the URL so bar goes some, away. So some browsers um, they just flush it at a regular interval, but only yeah. after you scroll a certain distance. Right. Yeah. Um, some other browsers um, they they do it immediately. Yeah. Um, some just wait until you have ended your gesture. Um, it also depends if you're slowly moving, then it will like say, OK, I'm doing this. If you are swiping up, then it will wait. Well, some browsers will wait until the animation has settled. So thanks. I hate it. I hate yeah, it all. It, it depends. Like, so there's no yeah. spec for it. So the browsers are all doing whatever they want. Yeah. Great. Perfect. But it's also there for uh, performance reasons. Yeah, of course, because they yeah. want this to run on the compositor, and running layout on every frame is expensive. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. OK. So yeah, this is this is obvious fact, right? Why it resizes because it is the uh, area through which you consult the document. So and that, that has that, changed kind of, size. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Just just yeah. like you resize your uh, desktop browser window, it also changes. Okay. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. All right. I, okay. Tick. I agree. What about the ICB? Uh, that's the one that's, that scrolls away, isn't it? Yeah. Um, oh. Does that change as well? I mean, it's going to, still going to scroll away, but does that? I'm just going to tell you, it's not going to change. OK. It, it, it's, not, it's not going to change. So oh, it, it will just move up, and it won't adjust its size. Because it took a, it took a look at the layout viewport when it was initially there with, with all the dynamic toolbars expanded. And it says, this is the initial containing block. Right. So. Yeah, so that means if I have something that's 100 VH, that's going to be assuming all of the, all of the. We'll get there. Okay. Because this is that's a tricky part on on the mobile. <laughs> okay. Um, what about the visual viewport? Well, that that does change. That one does yeah. change. That, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the easiest oh, one, right? Okay. Yeah, that one does change. So okay. if, if we scroll away, it it stays there. Um, it adjusts as the toolbars uh, expand or contract. And yeah. then if you pinch zoom in, they will remain there because it's a part that you are v currently looking at. Cool, All right? Yeah, that, that was OK. That was OK. That was that fine. Was that was painless. Now let's talk about the large, small, and dynamic viewport. Because you just mentioned viewport units, and this is all related to that. Because we've, we've done this before, we've given an element a width and a height of 100 VH and VW. We've positioned it on the screen. Yeah. On a desktop browser, it would cover up the entire uh, layout viewport. Mm -hmm. On mobile, it will do this. Well, is that, wait, that, isn't that breaking the rule? The, the rule, wait, the rule was that that <laughs> should be the containing. No. Isn't that wrong? Is that wrong? It said it's containing. The block thing, which is the, we had a box. You drew a box around it before. Why isn't it the same size <laughs> as the box you drew? I don't like it. Well, um, developers don't like it either. So CSS developers they don't like it either. Um, it's a behavior that was put in there by Mobile Safari uh, back in the day. Chrome on mobile eventually adjusted to also do this behavior, so that it was consistent across browsers, um, and. The definition now has been updated, so it, it's kind of okay now. But you have oh, to, is it? but you have to That's understand. To so I, I will try and explain it to you. Okay. Um, what you is interesting, try. though, if you scroll the page up a little bit, 
it gets sized like this. Yeah, I, I can and see now this makes sense, right? I suppose, but like a lot of times when you want to use that, it's in a situation where you, you know, you're not going to have a scroll bar. Like it, you're, you're wanting to have just that box within the, the thing, and it's, you, your scrolling is going to be somewhere inside that. And that, <laughs> yeah, I have encountered this problem before. It, yeah, and now I know why. Okay, how do I fix it? If we take a look back, we have these two types of viewports. And we could call the one on the left the small viewport and the one on the right the large viewport. Right, okay. And note the colors that I'm using. Okay, so got it, green on the left and blue on the right. Yeah, and the okay. box was blue before, so it started making sense. These have been defined at the CSS level. It's a recent update, well, recent as in no more than two years ago, I think. Okay. And it says the small viewport is a viewport size, assuming any dynamic UA interfaces, so these are the toolbars that uh -huh. can go away, to be expanded. So here the address bar is expanded and the tab bar is also expanded. The large viewport is the one where those elements are retracted. Yeah, okay. Yeah, fine. And we've got units for that. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. You've got uh, SVH for small viewport height, LVH for large viewport height, and, and of we, course the, the width and so on. And we can just forget that VH ever existed and just use these instead, right? Because these actually have more meaning. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> you sound confident. That's what I'm going to do. There, there's also an extra unit in between there, um, which is dynamic viewport. Can be the small viewport height or the large viewport height. And I presume, height. again, due to composited scrolling, it's not going to happen frame by frame. It's going to snap at some yeah. point. Some browsers only I update see. it after you have done scroll scrolling. Some browsers only do it as a resize gets triggered. Some do it after a little while. Some add an interval. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it is what it is. OK. It's yeah. fine. It's fine. But you can use it. So this is both true. Yeah. This is 100 dvh, and the one on the right is also 100 dvh. Okay, so yeah. a lot of cases where this is actually what you want, I suppose. Yeah. Sometimes, maybe. Okay. Um, if you're wondering about browser support, by the way, it's there on the top right. So this is supported by Safari uh, on mobile, of course. Firefox yeah. on mobile as well. Um, it's behind a feature flag right now in a Chromium based browsers. So okay, that's so Chrome. we're not quite there yeah. yet. So we're not quite there yet because. Um, well, stuff that I'm about to tell you later throughout this episode. <laughs> we, we are we are waiting on launching it until we kind of resolve on an interrupt issue okay. before we go all in. So the small viewport units, SV and then uh, width, height, min, max, large viewport, LV, DV, and then uh, the UA default viewport. So the, those regular viewport units from before, right. they have been renamed to the UA default viewport. Forget about them, put them in the bin. And okay. um, the spec says, you know what? User agents, so browsers, they can decide whichever one they want to use. If they want to default to small or to large, just choose one. Um, all uh, browsers have settled on using the large viewport for that. For historic reasons, why it didn't work before, so they said, you know what, the default one. Is a large viewport. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of okay. No, I. I'm just like I'm gonna forget about those old VH things. I'm gonna use the, the small, the large, or the dynamic yeah. one. That's, once yeah. once they are there in uh, Chrome on Android. Um, oh yeah 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 yeah. They're still behind the flag right yeah. now. Now you might be wondering like, okay, I kind of get these concepts, but where do we get like the sizes from, or does it link to any of the stuff that we just mentioned before, to the ICB, to the layout viewport, and whatnot? Well, the answer is uh, yes, because our SVH, that's kind of the same as the ICB. ICB, right, yeah. I see. And then our okay. LVH is the size of the ICB plus... Oh, plus something, well, plus the size of the stuff that's going to go away, but... Yes. Oh, okay, yes. I, there, is an, there isn't another term for that, though. The stuff that's going away. S is that what it says the, in the spec? The going the, away stuff. Um, dynamic user agent interface elements. <laughs> That's the, the official term. Oh, right? I love web yeah, specs. Yeah. Brilliant. Or just yes. dynamic toolbars. That's the easiest to say. Yes. Dynamic stuff, toolbars. Stuff that goes away. Yeah. Um, this is in the spec, by the way, because I just mentioned it before. The viewport lengths are relative to the size of the ICB. OK. And they weren't directly linked to the size of the viewport. They were linked to the size of the ICB. And the ICB is linked to the size of uh, the viewport. Yes. So, I think. so that's why this 
kind of makes uh, sense by now. If you want to put them next to each other. Yeah, I see it. This is in all browsers with the expanded toolbars. If the toolbars are contracted, you get this. And this like, makes sense to me. Yeah, I like this. This is fine. Yeah. And the dynamic one is going to be the, the, the yeah. So just remember, yeah. and it's, it's weird to say, but the viewport units, they are based not on the size of the viewport, but on the size of the ICB. ICB. Updated slide here. So I've added their small viewport is ICB size, large viewport is ICB size, plus the size of the dynamic toolbars. Dynamic toolbars. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm on board with that. Are you ready? Yeah, just do it. Come on. Yeah. I don't. So I, ha I haven't uh, talked about resize size behavior. Um, I did mention it about the ICB. What is that that you see there on the page? I was going to say it's a box, but you're going to tell me it's a text input. And what happens when you go into a text input? The virtual keyboard <gasps> gets shown. Yeah. OK. And this is where all things just fall apart uh, right now. This is the ICB. If it's uh, not focused, the text input, what happens if we focus the input? Go on. Bam. Right, I hate it. OK, so we're seeing a difference in Safari, which makes Safari look like the outlier. But the other two are on Android, so you could say this behavior is evenly split between Android and iOS. Not exactly. Um, I've created a little table for you that okay. uh, defines, uh, that says uh, this browser resets the ICB, this one doesn't. All right. It looks like this. I see. So Firefox resizes it on both platforms. Um, Chrome doesn't resize it on iOS, but does on Android. And for the record, Chrome on Chrome OS also does not resize the ICB when the virtual keyboard gets shown. Right. Okay. So yeah, Chrome on Chrome OS behaves more like Safari that we saw before. Yeah. yeah, the, yeah. The, the the keyboard is overlaying the the, the ICB. Okay. Uh, well, not okay. <laughs> but it's in my head. I'm not happy it's in my head, but at least it is facts. Um, if you want to see me uh, add some opinion to this slide. Yeah. This is it. This is a personal opinion. Okay. Um, yeah. Because I have been using uh, iOS for over 10 years by now, and this is the behavior that I'm accustomed to. As a, yes, as a web developer, I suppose as a user, it's sort of, well, it, I guess it will crop up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think it kind of depends like what your default is and then you see the other platform as the other platform, and not. so. Uh, but this is this is my personal opinion. Um, so this affects our our viewport units, right? Because our viewport units were um, in relation to the ICB. Yes. And due to a resized ICB, our SVH and our LVH, uh, and they also change. Yeah, I mean, I sort of prefer the Android behavior, but maybe again, I've been an Android user for ten years, so maybe. Uh, this is why we are not shipping uh, viewport units just yet. Do you know what? Because I had this issue on Chrome OS uh, for something that I built for Google I.O. And I had to hack around it in order to get the behavior on the right. Because I wanted, when the keyboard appeared, I, I wanted the layout to change as the result of the yeah. keyboard appearing. But by default, it wasn't, which I presume is, is what Safari is doing here. We're getting there, because this is the layout viewport. Uh huh. Which one resizes, which one doesn't? Well, same scenario right here. Yeah. Um, so again, if you use something like a position fixed bottom, uh, they will end up in different places. On iOS, yeah. it will be obscure. On uh, Android, it will not be. And because uh, we've got here, I now know that the behavior is different on Chrome OS if an yeah. element is full screen. Like the full screen element will resize for the keyboard. That one I didn't know. That was the hack I wow. used to work around it. So <laughs> there, there we go. All right. Whether that's supposed to do that or not, I don't know, but it does. Our visual viewport, just to make the chart complete, it goes on top of there. This one, thankfully, makes sense. Yeah, it, so this is common between all of them. It, yeah, it, that's resize, good. it resizes. Good, right? Yeah. <laughs> resize. Yeah. What happens though on iOS sometimes, if the input is like too low on the screen, and if you focus it, it will offset the layout viewport uh -huh. and make sure that the text input is centered uh, in there. I think I've seen Android So you, do you this can as well. end up in this behavior. Um, Android does it as well. Yeah. But since it is resized by default, you, you don't get into it. I see. It, yes, that, it, that often. I see. Yeah. 
that makes sense. So the layout viewport versus the virtual keyboard, um, does it change, yes or no? Well, on iOS, uh, most of them are unchanged. On Android, they all get resized. OK, okay. this, this is the layout viewport, not the visual yeah. viewport. Good, good. Yeah, the, the visual viewport, viewport is changing on all of them. And then that's, on the previous uh, table slide, we had uh, versus the ICB. This is here uh, versus the layout viewport. All right. What, what happens okay. right there. If you want me to see, add some opinion on there, well, I don't have one. Um, because there's stuff to say for both. If you are building an app-like interface and you have a bottom navigation bar, yeah. you would want it to move. be there as on iOS. You want it to be there at the bottom and you want, if you have a floating action button, I, I think you do want the behavior on the right where it stays above the keyboard. For example, if you go to the Twitter uh, web app, uh -huh. if you pop up the keyboard uh, for to search for something, you want the new tweet button to still be in place there sometimes, mm -hmm. I guess. So I think there, there's, there's something to say for both of these uh, scenarios. Perfect for nav bars, perfect for floating action buttons. Yes. Yeah. So we kind of want both. OK. I want to talk to you about the virtual keyboard API, because this relates to all these viewport resize thingies and whatnot. Um, the virtual keyboard API is only supporting Chromium-based browsers. So that's very unfortunate. Yeah, it's relatively new. Oh, yeah. And we've, yeah. we've asked for standards positions with the other vendors, and they, they seem very hesitant, hmm. which is unfortunate, I Is think. it because they don't want to expose that information at all, or is it because they don't like that particular API? Or do they don't like, like the shape of the API, because it also has some show and uh, hide methods that you can like uh, trigger the virtual keyboard uh, being shown. For example, that was one of the things that they didn't like. OK. Which okay. might be handy if you're building um, some kind of tool with, with a toolbar and a button. And yeah, if that doesn't have an input, then you want to trigger the keyboard somehow. So yeah, I've wanted that before. Yeah, that's fair. Let me show you some code. First, you check if the virtual keyboard is available in the platform. Yeah, of course. And then you can say, you know what, virtual keyboard dot overlays content equals true. But there's also this interesting event that you can listen for, namely geometry change. And it will give you the dimensions and the position of the virtual keyboard. On the left is the default behavior uh, of Chrome on Android. It resizes the whole lot. Yeah. If you set overlays content to true, true, it doesn't resize anything. And I think this is a bit weird that it doesn't resize the visual viewport. Oh, yeah, that is weird. But hey, OK, we. We we have a way to to switch between. Yeah, you're right. Things. It shouldn't. The visual viewport should the, change. The, the viewport. Yeah. Yeah. That one should change, right? Agreed. What's cool is that in CSS you can use these values as well. There are some environment variables available um, where you can say, "Hey, give me the height of the virtual keyboard," mm -hmm. and take that into account. So by default, if it is not shown, the value here will be zero. So you have twenty pixels plus zero. If it is shown it will have this extra offset. So you don't need to use JavaScript to, to lay things out yeah. using, using these values. Nice. One quirk, this virtual keyboard overlays content equals true line. Yeah. That's the way how you activate it. There is no non-JavaScript way to activate this behavior, unfortunately, which is a bug. I filed an issue for it, and I've asked, like, hey, give us a way to change it through MetaTag or whatever. But if the keyboard's not overlaying it, then you don't need those values anyway? If it's not overlaying, then. Um, oh, but if, it, but if you're on Chrome OS where it overlays by default, you still don't get those end variables. I'm not sure. I need to check that. OK. Hmm. Something to look at. Interesting. Now, what if I look into my crystal ball? Um, because I just mentioned that yeah, you need this extra line of, of JavaScript to activate it. What if we have ways to change it and to choose one of the behaviors? What if we had like overlays content, which is um, the overlays content mode that we can enable? Yeah. The resize layout mode, where it does the Android behavior, but also as a third one, the resize visual. Stick it in a viewport meta tag and let us pick. Is that where this is going? Stick. Hey! <laughs> yes. If it's not part of the viewport meta tag, well, whatever, we can have a separate meta tag for it. Of course, of course. But it's but, all to do with the viewport stuff, so it yeah. kind of feels like the right place. But we it. would love to see a way uh, where authors have the ability to change the behavior uh -huh. so that they can opt in to one of the platforms. There are cases where you want one or the other, and having this, this ability to, to, to set it, I, I think, is yeah. that's what we want. Ship this it. is this. 
yeah, I would love to see this as well, but this is all just me looking into my crystal ball. Of course. Ship it. Uh, <laughs> Jake said it. Ship, Ship it. it. <laughs> Ship it now. <laughs> so people don't have to care about this stuff. Well, they do have to care about it, but they don't. They at least get things the same across platforms eventually when everyone supports this. Yeah. Okay. If I look more into my crystal ball. Uh oh. Because if you have the ability to change it, we still haven't solved something. One, one of the, one, uh, the second part of the problem, namely, uh, if you do position fixed hmm. with this uh, iOS behavior, content can get obscured by the virtual keyboard. What if you want an element to be there above the virtual keyboard? Do we need position something else? Hmm. Um, I don't know. Um, I was thinking of an addition to position where you can say position fixed against the fixed viewport and position fixed against the layout viewport. I and see. this fixed viewport would be a new viewport that is introduced. Oh, that's just what we need. Yeah, yeah but why not just add yeah, another We're one. talking about viewports, right? So <laughs> why not add a fourth one? <laughs> uh, Great, yeah. But, but I, I, see the, I see the feature, yeah. yeah. What would be cool with this is that this position fixed viewport would not resize as you zoom in. That makes sense, because you wouldn't want it to. Otherwise, you get the obscuring yeah. a problem yeah. and layouts happening on uh, pinch zoom. Yeah. So this is something that we might be considering. Well, I've proposed it to the CSS working group. Um, the issue didn't get closed uh, after a first discussion. So good that, start. that's that's good a good start. sign. Yeah. yeah. So we're 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 getting there. Hopefully. Nice. This is the issue, by the way. Yeah. Um, if you want to compare like the different behaviors of the viewports, uh, one of our engineers, uh, Robert Flack, he made a wonderful demo where you have a drop down that says, I want the iOS behavior, I want the Android behavior, I want two other behaviors just for demonstration, or I want this last behavior that I just proposed. Cool. Uh, so you can test it out in your browser. Uh, it's all there. Um, he's got screenshot up there as well. Great demo, great stuff. So if anyone has an opinion on that, this is where you can leave it. Excellent stuff. To close off, Jake, this, these are the last slides. We're almost there. I want to talk about the viewport investigation effort. So all of these right. things that I've told you today, um, they are the result of um, me looking into how viewports behave, how the ICB behaves and whatnot for the viewport investigation effort. So all browser vendors are part of this viewport investigation effort. So we have people on there from Google, from Microsoft, from Mozilla, from Apple. Brilliant. We are all putting our heads together and the goal is to um, identify the problems with the viewports and differences, and hopefully we can uh, get to a consensus, uh, even if that means through an opt-in way or whatever and whatnot. Which means that, yeah, developers won't have to, they'll have to care about all of the different viewports, but they won't have to worry too much about them being different across platforms. Yeah. Yes, please. So in the top link there, uh, you can follow along. This is where we have our discussions, our meeting agendas and whatnot. The bottom link contains a bunch of test pages which show you all these uh, blue boxes, red boxes, orange boxes that I have shown you. So you can point your browser on uh, to there and check them out how they all behave. <sighs> Great. And hopefully <laughs> this can all be fixed. Yes, I hope so as well. Your uh, sleeve is uh, folded up. <sighs> Almost covered the British flag. Oh my god. You're yeah, going to get expelled from the country. <laughs> <laughs> you get hung for treason for that. <laughs> <laughs>